Okay, today's lesson is going to be on how to type a memo. And in the past, a lot of word processors did not have the amount of templates that the current ones do. So in the past, you'd have to know um, basically all the rules for doing a memo. And if you had to do one from scratch, um, basically here are the rules and items that you'd have to follow. First is the top margin for a memo would always be two inches. So you would have had to gone to the page layout menu, clicked on margins, gone to custom margins, and then made sure that your top margin was set for two using the arrows and then click OK. Okay, as you can see, I have my two inch top margin. Next are the items that always show up on a memo. These are things that you always have to have. The first item is two, and that's who the memo is going to. Okay, on this memo, it's going to Mr. Holbrook. Okay, from is the next item, and that is who the memo is from, obviously. And that would be, if you were writing it, it would be your, your name or what I said, student's name. Okay, the third item is going to be the date. You always want to put the date that you're writing the memo or that um, the message that you're passing on if you're passing a memo on to someone else. Um, maybe from a phone call or a letter or email or something like that. You always want to put the date that that happened. And then the following item is the subject. Now, sometimes subject is replaced by RE, and RE is an abbreviation for regarding. It means the same thing. So this is basically what the memo would be about. And then it would be followed by a very short summary of what you're going to be talking about. So for instance, if you were going to type a memo to Mr. Holbrook about how you're doing in the class, you might just put class status as your subject line. Followed would be the message, and that's where you put your details. So your status that you're talking about, well, you might talk about things like currently my attendance is good, uh, what your grade is, I have a B in the class, and then any extra information. And I've learned a lot of new computer skills over the semester. And you might even say what those are, you know, how do you set up an account, how to use your email, and usernames and passwords, etc., how to access different websites um, like Khan Academy, typingweb.com, etc., etc., all the things that we've done so far, including Ignition EverFi and uh, digital literacy certification, etc. Okay, so. You have your two inch margin at the top, one inch all the way around on the other sides. You've got your items to, from, date, subject, and message. And those are the things that always show up in the memo and they always show up in that order. Okay, now I'm going to show you the easier way to do a memo, which is to use the tools that come with Microsoft Word. And you're going to notice that there's a few differences. The first thing you're going to want to do to do it the easy way is to go to the file menu and go to new. When you go to new it's going to give you choice. You can go to blank document, blog post, templates, all this kind of stuff. But if you look down below you're going to notice that you can find memos right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on memos because that's what we want to do. When I click on memos it gives me lots of different examples and if I click on the different examples they will show up over here to the right so that I can see what they look like. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on this first one which says a memo contemporary design and then I'm going to click the button that says download. When I download it, it downloads it into my Microsoft Word and notice that it's already set up. Okay, It's got my to, from, the date and instead of subject it's got regarding. Down here instead of writing the word message it just has a line and they put the message so it's a little bit different and they added one extra thing and that's because in the age of the internet and email a lot of this is done um, through email and if you're gonna send a memo to more than one person um, you would write who the main person is on the top to two but if there's other people that should probably look at the memo you would add their names under CC. CC stands for carbon copy um, because in the past um, things that were done on paper used to be done on multiple papers where if you were to write on it the carbon copy goes to the, the next page and the page under that because sometimes you'd have two, three, four pages. Um, now CC instead of meaning carbon copy can actually stand for 
computer copy. A lot of people just say it's computer copy because nobody uses paper anymore. We all use computers. Okay, so let's take a look. You still pretty much have the two inch margin if you look where they have the word memorandum, which stands for memo, M E M O. Okay. You have your two inch margin at the top, followed by your items. Now, there's double spacing between each of the items. Notice that there's two and then there's a space, then CC and a space, from and a space. Now, the message is single space, but if you have more than one paragraph, there's double spacing between paragraphs. So if you type more than one paragraph, remember it's double spaced between paragraphs, but the actual paragraph itself is single spaced. Okay, that question is going to be on your final. You need to make sure that you know the answer. If they ask you how is a paragraph spaced, it's spaced single spaced. But if the question asks you how is the spacing between paragraphs? Well, between paragraphs is double spaced. Okay? All right. And that's it for how to type a memo.